In our video today, we're going to be looking at topographical maps and we're going to look at satellite images that basically relate and show erosion and how this changes land features. And so we're going to go through a few clips using Google Maps today and kind of show you how this works. I would encourage you at home if you're looking at this video and, and needing to know this for science, for a test, or, or just in general, you just have that, that desire to look at it, uh, to take a look at this. You can also download a free software in Google that's called Google Earth, which just is really amazing. You can see all sorts of places around the world that you would like to visit. However, Google Earth that I have found, at least the current version I have, doesn't show you terrain basically in a topographical uh, map setting. Google Earth does, or Google Maps does show this, so that's what we're going to be using today in this video. I hope you enjoy it. Start out with the area I live, which is Amarillo, Texas. It sits in the high plains of Texas, pretty flat area, and we're looking at under our maps. Uh, we have terrain checked. So we can kind of see elevation changes and that's what I want to start off looking at. And so when we zoom in, uh, we can kind of see the street maps showing up right now. I actually want to go on the countryside. And what I want to uh, pay special attention to is our contour lines. You'll notice this in the center of our map right now. And you'll see this brown line that goes in a circle right here in the center. Basically Southeast Park is kind of near the center of this right now. and. Uh, that contour line basically says that the elevation there all the way around that circle is 3,600 feet above sea level and as we move away we see other contour lines we see these brown ones that are 3,600 feet and we can kind of trace them around they go in a big circle because for people that aren't in this area it's kind of hard to understand how flat we really are in the Amarillo area it's, it's no mountains no hills but we do get into areas that look like this and this area that we're seeing in the center of our screen right now is a canyon. And uh, basically, it starts uh, feeding into Powder Canyon State Park. And uh, you can Google that. That's a pretty neat place to look at. You can see photographs of it. Here's the state park right here. Basically, this, this canyon uh, was formed basically from the Prairie Dog Town uh, Fork of the Red River. And it's been eroding for thousands of years, basically eating away at the sides and then eating deeper at the canyon. And so if we notice, the contour line that you see at the edge of the canyon or the rim of the canyon is 3,200 feet above sea level. And we're going to zoom in a little bit on that, kind of look around. And we're in the state park, that's the green part here. And so if you notice, there's contour lines that show different peaks or different high elevations, which would be the top of the canyon and working downward. As you start seeing more concentric circles tighter among each other, which you notice here, uh, that means it's a steeper elevation. Each elevation changes by a certain amount of, of feet. So basically the, the, the brown lines go from 3,000 feet, the one to the right of the screen that I'm looking at, to 3,200 feet. And then all the way up to 3,400 feet. So the brown lines, the dark brown lines that you see there, are increasing at a rate of 200 feet every time you see one. So uh, it's just kind of a way to look at this. I don't think we can zoom in any more, but I do want to show a satellite image of what this looks like. So I'm going to click over to satellite, and we can zoom in more that way. So we're going to come in tighter, kind of let you see the canyon a little bit. So here's the road that goes through the state park. Uh, Powder Canyon is basically the second largest canyon in the United States, and uh, the only one bigger is the Grand Canyon. And so if I was standing in this location, this is what I would be looking at. Um, it's just a single photograph here, not as, not as cool as some of the stuff we can run into. At least it appears to be that way to me. So you can kind of see the canyon rim a little bit, at the top of one of those uh, formations there in the canyon. Uh, so I'm going to get away from this and X out of that so we go back to our full screen. So let's go back and let's look at something a little more interesting. Let's go to Pikes Peak, Colorado. Okay, so now I want to get a full picture of this. Now this is pretty amazing, a lot different. This is much higher elevation, uh, one of the tallest places there in Colorado. And so you can see the road that kind of zigzags around the canyon uh, edge to kind of get, or the, I'm sorry, the mountain uh, side to come up to the top of the peak. What you'll notice is the concentric circle right here in the middle. 
and that is just completely the top part of the of the uh, mountain top. You'll see how the tighter lines you see as far as coming up one side of the mountain or the other, those are going to be really steep areas. If you notice, we go from 11,600 feet, the next one up from that is 11,800 feet, then 12,000 feet, 12,200. So they're running at 200 feet every time you see a, a solid brown line. And so each brown line represents the same elevation all the way around in that area. Then you have the smaller ones that incrementally go up maybe by 50 feet or so. So you can also see that water tends to take the areas where erosion has happened. So you see this sheep creek right here. Eventually that sheep creek will run into a canyon or a, into a river. That river system will run into a lake. And of course, uh, bigger rivers that continue to flow eventually get to the ocean. So those are the tributaries that feed a certain lake or reservoir. Reservoir is an area where water is, is held back, uh, such as a lake. Um, could be a, a large pond. Um, but the neat thing about this is just seeing all these peaks, like uh, Sheep Mountain, you can see the peak of that, Mary's Mountain. Let's take a look at the satellite image of this area. Lots of trees and forest. So we'll kind of zoom up. Kind of see what it looks like. So it starts to get clearer as you get there. You can see the dam. So basically as satellites are looking down on Earth, this is what it looks like. And depending on how close we are, it depends on whether or not we can get the terrain. So we can't get terrain, we're zoomed in too close. The terrain feature in Google Maps only works at certain distances. So you can tell here we're zoomed up as much as we're going to be. And so here we are, I've just kind of placed my little guy there. If I was standing in that spot, this is the view I would see. So you can see a lot of icy uh, areas, snowfall. You can see the dam, which we were looking at just a minute ago. So if we were standing in that spot, that's what we would see. So topographical maps just basically allow you to see elevations. Uh, you can actually see roads. Here's some roads right here that kind of wind through the mountains. Uh, you can see railroad tracks. You can see airports. They usually list those as well. Um, but the elevation is really the main thing. If you are taking a hike or you are, uh, you know, doing some outdoor camping, it kind of lets you know kind of areas and trails. Some uh, some top uh, topographical maps will show you trails. Uh, to kind of show you where you need to be walking to kind of stay safe. And also if you were to get lost or deserted, those would be the trails that, that rescue people would be looking for you. And so it's, it's just basically a neat little thing. Really one of our uh, essential knowledge things to know is how erosion is affecting uh, these different areas that we've been looking at. We can tell the mountains, of course, uh, as it rains on the peak of a mountain, they have some choices. The rain has some choices to fall which direction based upon gravity and the areas with which the rain will flow to the lowest point. And so we normally see valleys cut uh, through these areas. And if we actually go to an area where erosion is like a huge factor, we'll go to another canyon that most people are aware of. Let's go to the Grand Canyon. And it's carved by the Colorado River. And of course, this is a very famous area to go whitewater rafting. You see those rapids. And so we're, we're looking at uh, the terrain right now and so we're gonna keep zooming up we can't get quite as close as we normally would like to get uh, with the terrain feature but we can see the elevations changing so the large contour line I see in, in my view screen is 5200 feet is kind of an area of a concentric circle that I see but I see areas in the canyon where it starts dropping 5,000 feet 4,600 feet 4,400 feet down to 400 feet and so on. Then you can see the Colorado River running through the canyon. So over, over many, many thousands of years, these, uh, this river has basically just eroded away the landscape. And so this would be one of those areas where I'm sure there's tons of photographs if you wanted to see it. So if we click photos, we're probably going to see lots of places where people have camped out or they've ridden the rapids, gone camping, or they've been on the rim somewhere and seen things. So we can see some of those erosion features like right here. We can see how the sides of the canyon are very tall uh, because it's just eroded away over time. And so this is a, a feature of a canyon that we would see in a topographical map, map setting. If we want to see a satellite view of it, of course we can click on that. I'm going to turn off our pictures or photos. And 
you can just see how tan everything is basically just red dirt uh, easy to erode away and the river where it's really running fast is always very brown and has lots of sediment being carried so that sediment gets deposited elsewhere uh, you know way down way down in the river system when it calms down that sediment will fall but let's, let's look at some other areas uh, as well let's go and take a look at um, some oceans let's look at the Gulf of Mexico cool thing about Google Maps is they have basically uh, taken away the ocean water so you can see the landforms underneath the ocean so that's really kind of cool uh, a right here represents the Gulf of Mexico and so what they've done is they've been able to take away in their imagery of satellites they could determine the density of water versus the density of land and then they could subtract those two images and end up with the landforms underneath the ocean so we're able to see tectonic plates and how those are moving so uh, remember we looked at the ring of fire which was the Asian plate so let's we'll scoot over there uh, it's over on the west side of the North North American continent and let's zoom out a little bit so here we have the Pacific plate here's Hawaii right here in the middle and you can see this chain of islands that are mountain ranges that just fall underneath the ocean towards Hawaii and so what's happened there is there's a hot spot where magma is feeding uh, underneath the Hawaiian Islands and just constantly erupting but the plate is also shifting so this chain of volcanoes has kind of shifted off to the left and upwards as the plate rotates in the uh, in this area and so at some point in time you know a few thousand years from now we're gonna see Hawaii has made its way much further northwest than it currently is and then if you see along the islands of Japan you just see how the plate rim is right there we have the rim that's the very top edge and then we have the uh, areas that are just see these deep trenches right here where we have subduction zones where the ocean continent or ocean plate is sinking underneath the land plates and causing the magma to shoot up at those areas and cause just a chain of volcanoes all the way around uh, Japan and through this whole area you know just a really rough place to live lots of earthquakes lots of tsunamis uh, lots of things like that okay I hope this video helped you out you can follow up this video and uh, watch my Mr. Hayes' Plate Tectonics. Simply go to YouTube, you can do a search for my uh, channel, just search for HPISD Hayes, or if you notice in my video comment or above this video, you'll see HPISD Hayes as a link. You can click on that.